Some companies just seem to be better at getting us to bring our hearts and our souls into work every day. And I believe that there is a new generation of those companies that we will soon see that will be so good at doing that that we will actually call them soulful. Soulful companies. Now, don't worry if that made you a little nervous or made you go, what the heck is he talking about? Because I get it. I, I spent a good chunk of my uh, career working in corporate America, and so I know that when we think of the company, we tend to think of it and associate it with words like profitability and efficiency and numbers and stuff like that that we probably process in the left side of our brains. And so now I'm up here on the stage with the audacity to try to get you to connect that with this, the soul, this great mysterious thing that we, we don't even really understand, except that we connect it with spirituality and probably process it in the right side of our brain. So I'm asking you to connect these two things that in a way we couldn't think about in more different ways. And yet, isn't that the reason that we're here today? to take ideas from different domains like this, to throw them together and see what we get. And so for the next few minutes, I'm going to try to help you bring the soul and the company together and imagine as though we could mix these things into this thing called the soulful company. Now, before I start, I just I want to say one thing, which is that most of us view the soul as something special. And I do too. But that doesn't mean that we only bring it out on special occasions. It's not like clothing that we only wear into our places of worship on the weekends. That's not how it works. At least that's not the way I see it working. The soul is embedded deep inside us. It's, it's the greatest part of who we are. And to think that we could somehow check it at the door when we walk into work in the morning is... Well, it's ridiculous. That's not, what we, that's not the way it works. And that's not what companies need. And that's not what companies want. But more importantly, that's not what we need. And that's not what we want as human beings. So to help you understand why I believe this idea of the soulful company is so important, we're going to look at it from two perspectives at first. The first is the perspective of the company and then the, company, and then the perspective of the soul. So standing over here in the perspective of the company, we can see that what's sitting over there in the soul looks pretty attractive. I mean, that's where all the good stuff is. That's where all the juicy stuff is. Things like imagination, creativity, intuition, instincts, passion, drive, empathy for customers and other people who are connected with the firm. Even our sense of meaning and purpose in life, all right over there. So you can imagine that as a company, I'm quite interested in being able to connect over there and engage people at that level. And the leading companies of our time, companies like Google, REI, Southwest Airlines, Apple, and Whole Foods, com those companies, they know how to engage us at that level. And in fact, there's good research out there that shows that when companies know how to do that, to deeply engage their customers and their employees in that way, that their sales end up growing 85% faster than their competitors do, 85%. So from a bottom line, a bottom line perspective, you can, you can see why the soul is so important to business. But here's where we need to be a little careful, because... Growing up, we've, ter we've heard stories, folk tales, and even today, we, in our pop culture, hear tales of brain-munching zombies and, and blood-sucking vampires and, and even the devil trying to do a deal with us to steal our soul. Those things make us nervous at a pretty deep level. So you can imagine why the soul, the soul might be apprehensive, even a little repulsed at the idea that something might be out there trying to harvest it for profit. Ugh. <laughs> And so here is where we need to step into the perspective of the soul. And from here we can see that when it comes to our connection with companies, 
it's not enough just to use the language of the corporation. We need to also be able to understand the language of the soul. And from this perspective, too, we can see that when it comes to engaging us in our work, it's not good enough to just tap the soul. We need to also feed it. And in order to do that, we need to know what the soul wants, what it needs. And in this context of work, the soul wants lots of things, for sure. But the thing it needs most is a sense of meaning. The belief that when we go into work every day, what we do matters. Not just to ourselves, but to our friends, our neighbors, our community, even the world. And so this gets us to a different perspective, a final perspective, which is the perspective of society. Over the last 150 years, corporations have shown time and again that they are this remarkable engine of change. Over that time frame, they have shaped not just our economy, but our society and even our planet. And so we have these two remarkable forces. The company with this amazing engine of economic, social, and even ecological change. And the soul with its deep desire to do work that really matters to the society and to the planet. And when we finally, as a society, learn to bring these two amazing forces together in a true an equal partnership, well, we will create something new, something beautiful and powerful. And I'm here today, standing before you, sharing this with all of you, because I believe that this new entity, this soulful company, is critical not just to building a better business, but to building a better world. Thank you.